All right, guys. Thanks a lot um, for sticking through our semi uh, quarterfinals match. Uh, Josh Monks needs to leave right now. We got our tournament organizer, the intrepid Christopher Cornejo. He's going to be joining me, and we have our semi ma matchups, semis figured out. We're going to have Jacob Roberts on Mono Blue Dover versus. Jason Schumacher on Blue Red Cyclops. And on the other side of the bracket, which I think we'll be featuring, is Brad, who we just saw on camera, versus Mike Kizo on Mono Green Stompy. Yes, we are keeping Brad in the same seat and just putting Mike in where John was just playing. All right, sweet. Who do you like in this matchup? Uh, let's see. Mike's on the play? I kind of like Mike. Mike is playing a super aggressive deck. Do we have a deck list around here somewhere? Yeah, I do. Yeah, here we go. So yeah, Mike is just getting creatures on the board, rancoring them up, mutagenic growthing, just beating your face down really fast. A lot of his creatures are fairly resilient, things like Young Wolf, that Jeremy Edwards Legacy All-Star. Ow. Uh, scroll down a bit, actually. Ah, don't worry about it. Can I change it on stabs or something? Or? I just hit stop. There we go. Um, so yeah, Jeremy Edwards, Legacy All-Star. However, he's not here at the <laughs> Copper event. Uh, Young Wolf is being carried in spirit by... Um, <laughs> by Mike Kiesel. Mike Kiesel. So uh, let's take a look at the matches and see what's going on. Looks we're like we're Brad giving Brad a second to step away after that marathon he just played. Yep. And wow, he took down a pretty tough matchup too in order to take this. Uh, yeah. Yeah, I was actually thinking that John had a bit of an edge in that one, just matchup wise. I think most people would agree. Certainly, uh, certainly Josh thought so. Yeah. So this this matchup is going to be dependent on Mike being able to stick a threat that does not immediately get edicted, verdicted, disfigured, something. Well, he's going to need to get underneath all the removal, but he is fortunately going to be able to take the play. Who do you like in this matchup? I think with Mike on the play, I like him a little more. If Brad draws the right uh, amount of removal in his opening hands, Mike will have a tough time keeping up. A lot of what makes Mike's deck so annoying, though, are the four rankers. And my voice is dying, so I apologize if I sound all scratchy and whatnot. Uh, yeah, the four rankers that he plays, which I've seen him just absolutely wreck people's day with because all of his small, dumb creatures become ridiculous very quickly. There you go. Yeah, just hit start. So we are here in uh, ready to begin the semifinal rounds. Yes. Uh, I know Mike was very confident because he was on the play. Yeah. Uh, meanwhile, while these guys are shuffling, uh, what do you think of the other side of the bracket? We got Jacob on Mono Blue Delver versus Jason on Blue Red Cyclops. I think Jason has a distinct edge there. Just based on matchup or? Based on matchup, yeah. Uh, they're doing a lot of the same things, but Jacob can kill in one turn. Oh, yeah. That's or not really Jacob. True. Jason can kill in one turn, which he's been doing pretty consistently. Just yeah. three spells, one of which gets a creature through, and either Kiln Fiend or uh, Nivik Cyclops yeah. just annihilates you at that point. So far, we've had five matches between Cyclops and Dover. <coughs> it's up 3 2, so it looks like if these results are believable, Blue Red Cyclops is slightly favored. Yes. And as for uh, Mono Green Aggro versus Mono Blue Control, we've had three matchups. It's actually been in favor of Blue Black Control 2 to 1. So uh, looks like Mike is uh, contemplating his seven. Looks like he's keeping and Brad. If I Brad can get that angler down, that's going to be a big problem yeah. for Mike. I don't know if he has a way of getting that off the board. Pump spells, the green version of burn. Yeah. Green removal. Actually, I guess Berserk was the original green removal spell. Pretty much, yeah. Didn't really see. Oh, Brad had to send that one back, which is unfortunate. Who are we modding? <laughs> Time out. Hey, thanks for the reminder, Gibbs. Uh, we're trying to <laughs> figure out the production aspects of this, and uh, certainly we like to interact with the chat, but we are down on manpower right now. A little bit, yeah. 
All right, let's see if Brad likes this six. Uh, three lands, four lands. And on Earth. Is that a Rager? Ah, uh, he's keeping it. Looks like a Scry. Gray Merchant right there. That's a little bit of a... Is that a Merchant? A five lander, and he's got a Gray Merchant. Looks like he's scrying this to the bottom. And Mike leading off with Quirion Ranger. Quirion Ranger, uh, it's an excellent card in every single format it's been legal in. It's true. This is the first time in many years I've seen it outside of an Elves deck, though. Yeah, Elves and Legacy takes advantage of this. Uh, this is a way to like make land drops, make mana if you're like uh, stuck on land drops. Oh, and he's going to get aggressive here with a ground spell. Landfall is going to trigger, and this is going to ensure Jeez. that he gets uh, 5 damage in on turn 2 with his Korean Ranger, setting Grad Somebody. 215. These life totals are a little bit backwards, though. Yeah, I do like him uh, putting it on himself. Mike! You, you dinged yourself, 5. <laughs> All right, and the Quirion Ranger gets Chain Receded good pretty quickly here. Yeah, and it looks like he followed up with a Skargan Pit Scope on his turn before the uh, Quirion Ranger hit the battlefield. So here we're going to have a Garrick's Companion. He's going to get really aggressive, crashing in, setting Brad to 13, and he's got five power worth of uh, creatures on the board. Yeah, that's what I was talking about. Brad just needs all the removal right now, or else he's going to just fall into a pit he cannot get out of. Kumbaj Witches, one damage pinger, but it's got a little bit of downside. <laughs> Namely, it can't hit the one toughness, uh, more the big toughness creatures from the Stompy deck, in addition to the fact that it just um, deals damage to you. He's going to be setting this on chunk blocking duty. Um, not quite no, chunk, not yet. chunk blocking. It was a 2 2. Yep. It is holding the ground decently against that, uh, what is it, Scargan Pit Skull. Yeah. And we have Frexen Rager. It's a little bit painful, but it's going to get a Brad hopefully a little bit more gas to work with. And here he's uh, one mana short of being able to cast Dramatic Angler next turn. A block would his graveyard for the delve. Yes. Yeah, once he can land that angler, he's in much better shape. Oh, you know, um, the chat pointed out that was an illegal block. Scargan Pittsburgh has some text on it. Uh oh, all right. I'll be right back and let them know that they need to fix that then. Yeah, You're I back. think they've come to this realization because the pace of the game has kind of slowed down. Um, So right now, our intrepid tournament organizer, commentator, as well as judge uh, in this instance, Chris Cornejo is going to go ahead and try to get the game state rewound a little bit. Two more damage off of the pit spoke. Mike Kiesel's, uh sitting with a 27 advantage as this uh, pit skulk uh, crashed in successfully without getting blocked. Vines of the Vastwood on pit skulk. That's uh, going to make it 6-6 six, six before blockers can be cleared, but because of that extra text on it, this is actually in block, unblockable. And uh, now lethal with the mutagenic growth, so yeah. that was quick. Wow. Let's go ahead and take a look at the sideboard, see what both players are working with. Brad the Foster <coughs> is going to be on the play. Uh, what do you like here? Oh man, this is a tricky one. Duress and Wrenchmind you can bring in to try to get all of his uh, pump. Yeah, and I could only possibly see this on the play. I don't think it's good enough on the draw. No, maybe the Duress is on the draw, but the Wrench Mine may be on the play. Yeah. What about uh, Pestilence? Pestilence is tricky. You need to get it down real quick, like on four, because they're already beating you down by that point. The fact that it hurts you as well makes it real awkward in this matchup. No, I agree. And then uh, Death Deny, probably a little bit too slow, right? Yeah. Like... This sideboard is made for like the more controlly half of Popper. The super aggro side is the one thing that Mono Black doesn't really have a sideboard for because it normally plays enough removal where it can keep up. It's just that Mike's deck is so fast and hits so hard that you need to draw all of your removal right at the beginning and hope Mike stalls out. Yeah. I wonder what kind of removal package Brad has to work with. We saw some of that on camera. He's got the three disfigures, four Sign in Blood, three Chainer's Verdict, two Death Verdict, and Ob Obliet. Two tenders of corruption, corruption, a victim of night, a maniac pestilence, and one in the sideboard. Uh, Brad actually does have two oubliettes. That was a uh, weird thing earlier with a deck check where one of his cards went missing, but we found it later. Okay, that's <laughs> great. And oubliette is one of the few popper cards that actually commands a reasonable price tag. Oh, reasonable. Hefty. Yes, reasonably reasonable. Hefty, yes. <laughs> uh, meanwhile, I think these guys are still sideboarding. The other side of the top eight bracket, uh, Jacob and Jason. Uh, it's probably going to be pretty aggressive. You said you like the Cyclops deck a little bit more. We'll see if we can get that on camera if this match ends quickly. So back to the sideboard. Uh, I think both 
sides are not going to be boarding especially heavily. Uh, and I think this favors Mike because he looked like he was in a dominant position in game two, one. Yeah, I don't know if Mike bothers bringing in a lot of anything. Not really. Natural state maybe if he's hedging against the Oubliettes, but I doubt it. Yeah. I, I guess if he really wants to angle shoot on getting a you know, uh, Pestilence off the board if Brad has to tap out for it. But again, I don't think Brad should be bringing in Pestilence anyway. Yeah. Well, there's a ton of removal in that hand, but only, is that one now? Two land. So yeah, he has Victim of Night, a Disfigure. Uh, it's borderline if he wants to keep it. Mono Black Control is not a deck that can run super great off of low lands, yeah. but... I think you need to keep any hand with decent number of lands, like two or three is ideal, <laughs> and a lot of instant speed removal. Uh, because the Mono Green Stompy deck, if you trade one for one and maybe even get a two for one off of their pump spells or rancors, then uh, you have a very good shot at letting your superior late game cards pull you back into the game. Yes. Young Wolf for Mike on turn one. Brad just dropping a second land, did not draw a third, I believe. So now he has to navigate through this Young Wolf. This young he's just going to take the one. One of the best threats against Mono Black because all their creatures send your creatures. All the removal other than Oubliette, send your creatures to the yard. And it feels real bad to have to use an Oubliette on a 1-1. One, one. Oh yeah, and there's going to be two young wolves now. Alright, so get rid of the Skargan Pit Fiend, or Skulk, Pit Skulk. Skulk. And that was with a disfigure, it's pretty simple, <coughs> minus two, minus two to any creature. Alright, Brad found a third land, it's a Baron Moor, which is not the best as it enters tapped, but it does start building up his mana. Yeah. Mono Black Control really wants to start getting up to like five, six mana as soon as it can to really be functioning on all cylinders. Oh yeah, certainly. Looks like he's going to play that land tapped and uh, pull it open. He has a Victim of Night, I believe, in hand okay. still. It's a little bit awkward. I think that's a Geth's Wolf. Verdict in his hand, I'm not sure. Mike with the Vines, which could get real awkward. I think yeah. he'll let one Young Wolf die just so it gets pumped a little bit there. Yeah. And Mike's going to save these for defensive use. Or, or no, Brad. he's going to... Uh, sorry, Mike, I was referring to the vines. Oh, he's yeah. going to get in there with a... Is that Solana Ledge Walker? I believe so. It looks like it. And uh, yeah, that is yeah, indeed it's... a Solana Wedge Ledge Walker. So uh, that Baron Moore awkwardly enough turns on the... Oh, no, sorry, it's not non-basic block. I'm sorry. No, no, no. It just can't be blocked except by creatures of the flying, and it essentially has hexproof. So the Rager can block one of the uh, Young Wolves, stem the bleeding a little bit. Mike's still just getting in with Nickel and Dime stuff, but that's enough once he has his big turn. Mm -hmm. Oh, and he's going to fight. <coughs> gonna Epic fight. Confrontation, that is what Mike brought in. And this, uh, the pump aspect of the Epic Confrontation is going to make it 2-3, big enough to tangle with that Rager, as well as... Uh, and here we go with an offensive uh, wow. Vines. That's two, three, four, eight damage. I believe so. It's half of uh, Brad's <laughs> life total, if I did the math correctly. I've seen some mono black decks playing things like Nausea, which Brad really wants right now, but it doesn't have it in his version of this list, yeah, sadly. Yeah, Nausea is a great way to deal with a bunch of like small, stompy creatures. Uh, doing another Rager. Another Rager is going <coughs> to possibly be on jump, jump blocking duty. Uh, another True into a land, at least. Unearth. Oh, oh okay. there we go. That's a, that's a start. But Rager and Unearth helps uh, set up the triggers appropriately. I will be right back, everybody. Got to do some TOing right now. Yeah, and uh, okay. And we just have news in the other left side of the bracket. Jason Schumacher with Cyclops wins in three, and uh, that was a lightning fast round because I thought this match was going pretty quickly. Uh, right now, it is 1-0 in favor of Mike Kizo, and uh, he is looking ahead in the second game as well with a very aggressive start. He's going to punch in for 5 damage between the ledge walker and uh, the vines of the vast wood, and Brad is in very bad shape right now. This ledge walker is effectively unblockable, so he's gonna, step 1 is going to be trying to deal with that somehow. Uh, 
Brad's going to take a nice tank, uh, think about his options. He's staring down the barrel, so certainly he wants to think of how best to um, maximize chances. And maybe like part of this will involve Mike having to mess up in some way, but he's got to think about these possibilities. It's a difficult decision at this point. He just needs one extra land. He could turn on that Grey Merchant and maybe buy him a few more life points, but unfortunately it doesn't look like it's uh, coming to him. Yeah, he needs a way to get rid of the slum up. Hit yeah. uh, Ledge Walker too, which having hexproof means he has to edict it, which is kind of tricky when your opponent has flooded the board with a ton yeah. of small stuff. And he's just, he needs more creatures. Uh, he needs to land in order to just play that great merchant, and it's just not his day right now. What's the what's the Black Fog? That's what he needs. I know there is one, I just forget the name of it. So uh, Mike's gonna go crash in with everyone. And we, <laughs> maybe, he'll, maybe he'll sacrifice the right creatures. Nope. He has one more verdict in his hand. I think he fires it off and hopes Mike has an aneurysm and sacks the ledge walker. No, I mean, the, the dice nope. means you can't okay. sacrifice them, right? All right. And that's going to take the match in favor of Mike Kizo. He's going to win two to nothing. And uh, that actually brings us to the finals after a lightning fast round. Yes. Uh, so we're going to come back here in the booth briefly. Uh,